We are asked to write the quadratic function y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5 in the vertex form y equals a x minus h squared plus k and graph the parabola. Place it on pause and see if you can come up with a vertex on your own. Welcome back. Did you get the following? Did you get negative 3, negative 4 for the vertex? If you did, very good. Move on to the next part. If you didn't, let's go through and we need to take our original equation, y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5, and we need to do completing the square on this to put it in vertex form. So we're, gonna, we're going to take half of 6 and square it. So half of 6 is 3. If we square that, we get 9. And we just added a 9. We need to keep the value the same. So let's subtract a 9. And now the next step, let's just move the parentheses using the associative property and write it as x squared plus 6x plus 9 and then move the negative 9 outside of the parentheses. Then what we have here is a perfect square and x squared plus 6x plus 9 factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3 which is x plus 3 squared and we have a negative 9 plus 5 which is negative 4 and now it is in the vertex form but not quite because notice that we need to have a minus h there so we'll rewrite it as x minus and then in order to make a plus 3 we'll have to write it as x minus a negative 3 squared minus 4 and now it's in vertex form and our a value is 1, our h value is negative 3, our k value is negative 4 and sure enough the vertex then is negative 3, negative 4. Okay, the next step is we want to uh, graph what we have so far. So far we found the vertex. So let's go ahead and graph that. So I'm making a, a y-axis and an x-axis here. And we found the vertex to be at the point negative 3, negative 4. So we'll move negative 3 to the left for the x value and for the y value it's negative 4 so we'll go down 4 left 3 down 4 that puts the vertex right here at negative 3 negative 4 so we've graphed one point the vertex let's see if we could graph a couple of other points notice let, what do we know so far there's our vertex uh, the value a is positive so we have this situation and we're going to have two places where our parabola crosses the x-axis. So we're going to have two zeros. Now if our vertex was up there we would have no zeros. If our vertex was right on the x-axis we would have one zero. But in our case we're, we have two zeros. So let's see if you can find those two zeros on your own. Place it on pause and see what you get. Okay, welcome back. I think our two zeros are located at, uh, let's see, one of them is at negative one zero and the other one is out at, uh, and these are our zeros, the other one is at negative five zero. If you got that for the two zeros, very good. Move on to the next part. Otherwise, let's see if we can go through this in detail. So let's rewrite the problem again. It was y equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. And uh, we want to find out when the y value is 0 because that's where the zeros are located. So we'll have 0 equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. 
and we can solve this. Uh, I kind of prefer to have the 0 on the right side, so let's just rewrite it with the x plus 3 squared on one side minus 4 equals 0, and then first step is we'll add 4 to both sides. The next step is we'll use the square root property, so let's just write down the x plus 3 squared again and the 4 again, and we'll take the square root of both sides. So we'll take the square root of the left side and the right side, and remember you have to take both the positive and negative. We want to find both the positive and negative values that give us 4 when you square them. So we'll have x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. Let's break this apart into two parts. One is x plus 3 equals positive 2 and the other is x plus 3 equals negative 2. And solving this side over here first we get x equals negative 1 and here when we subtract 3 from both sides we get x equals negative 5. So our two zeros are negative 1, 0 and negative 5, 0. That gives us another couple of points to plot. So let's go ahead and plot those two zeros. One is right there, negative 1, 0, and the other one is at negative 5 is right out here, 0. Now we have three points. The negative 1, 0, the vertex, and the other 0, which is negative 5, 0. Okay, it would be nice to have maybe another couple of other points. One point we might be able to come up with is the y-intercept. The y-intercept. That is where the parabola crosses the y-axis. So let's go back up and take a look at what we've got so far. So we want to know where is our parabola going to cross the y-axis. Well, what would the value of x have to be there? It would have to be 0 when the parabola crosses the y-axis. So let's rewrite our equation again. We have y equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. And go ahead and put it on pause and see what you come up with for the uh, y-intercept. Okay, welcome back. Uh, did you come up with the following? 0, 5. I believe 0, 5 is a y-intercept. If you got that, very good. Move on. If not, let's plug in 0 in place of x and see if we truly do get 0, 5. And sure enough, 0 plus 3 squared is 3 squared minus 4. And 3 squared minus 4 is 9 minus 4. And that is 5. So when x was 0, y is 5. And we now know where the y-intercept is. Let's go ahead and graph that point. So we'll move up 5 on the y-axis and uh, mark that point 0, 5. Okay, so so far we have four points. Let's see if we can actually come up with a fifth point. I'm drawing the axis of symmetry through the vertex and notice that the y-intercept point is three units away from the axis of symmetry and so there must be another point on the other side of the axis of symmetry, three units away, and that would take us out to negative 6, uh, negative 6, 5. Negative 6, 5 is another point. And now we have a total of five points, and we can draw a fairly, oops, a fairly accurate parabola. I hope that helps. See ya.